Hey everyone, it's Val and Lisa here from Primitive Gatherings and today it's time to do Meet Me in the Garden round six. The final piecing of the quilt. Yay! I'm so excited for you if you are here and ready for this. I know some of you have, you know. Yeah, we've seen posts of people getting finished, finished already. already. Good for you. You don't need any help. That's awesome. We know there's all skill levels doing Meet Me in the Garden. So if you are not done with your quilt and you are just piecing along, please don't take that as, you know, you're not good enough or you're or not fast enough. You or, haven't even started. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm going to do this quilt, but I'm going to do it. And yeah, but it's just, you know, sometimes things get in the way, right? We so, have other things happening. Yes, yep. yes, yes. But Val has a second quilt here finished. Look at all these beautiful parts flying geese, her cat's cradles. So I'm not going to mess that up, but she's already here. So what do you think? We're going to probably just show you how to do one compensating border and then it will just be that way. Yeah, for, we're going to talk a little quilt math um, okay. just so that you understand why it should all go together well. So everything um, it was either six or eight inch blocks finished. Um, our flying geese were five inch uh, finished, but most of our blocks um, were that six and eight, so our math was figured out from there. Um, on your pattern for the compensating borders, and that's what we call them. Sometimes people call them stop borders. You know, it's like a mm -hmm. stop that that design so but what, what she means by compensating border is she's going to explain that to you but these are a way to adjust in case you're off a little bit yeah in case we're I'm not at, yeah and <laughs> hopefully we're not hopefully because everything was trimmed we figured out our quarter inch seam allowance by this time um these the the sizes that are listed on there are the size they should measure at the at the time and i have to be honest when i made this quilt um, I was telling Lisa, I said, I don't really get a ruler out and measure things. I don't, I use my quilt as my measurement. However, for this quilt, I did measure things specifically to the sizes of the, the instructions. But I do want to talk about real quick, just to double check yourself on your finished sizes of your blocks. So our log cabins were six inch. We use the six inch trim tool. So that means, I know we've got lots of little threads here. When I lay my ruler on there, I should be six inches square and six, I am. Six inch means six inch finished. So we cut them six and a half. Though they were trimmed to six and a half because that was yep. the size of yep. our, our ruler. But the ruler on itself says six inch finish. So right. just to, it's really kind of sometimes confusing because when we're finished making the block, that's not the finished size. No, finished finish means size sewn into the into quilt. the quilt it has yeah. no seam allowances right. left. So when I'm measuring that, that measures um, six inches. So for instance, when I'm measuring our little half square triangles, we trimmed them to four and a half. But when I measure this, this needs to be four inches. So that's a way to kind of double check your seam allowance when you're sewing your pieces together to make sure they're the sizes. And do it on the ones in the middle, not the one on the outside edge, because the one on the outside edge still has your seam allowance a quarter inch on that. I, so. I do want to point out, though, that you may be a smidge bigger or a smidge smaller, and that should be okay. This right? one is probably a sixteenth, a, yeah. not quite and an eighth of an inch. So, I mean, you can't freak out about this too much, but just so you know what it should be, and then when you lay your strip on there. Right, you know. and so another check at this stage of the game, when you've completed um, round five of the log cabin, I had you make your half square triangles, and then we put everything together. Um, we start on round six, we put putting everything together. So. I laid mine out just so I knew what was what. Where was my top? Where was my bottom? I think this is my top, so this is going to be my left side. This is going to be my right side. So if I'm looking at that, when I lay these on here, these should measure the same. 
So I just want to talk about measuring a little bit too. I don't like take my ruler and plunk it down on top of something to get a measurement. And the reason I don't do that is if we haven't pressed and pressing is really key in this too. We need to have pressed everything really well. So I use a lot of steam when I press. Yeah, me too. And that gets things nice and flat. Yeah. And I know some people don't. And sometimes, I mean, their stuff turns out too somehow. I don't yeah. know, but yeah. I don't know. It's personal things, but. It is, but, and, and on this one, because we've starched it so much, we've been doing, you can press and, and, and steam and do whatever you need to do to get this thing to lay as flat as possible. Um, I know we had some questions about. Well, you like, said you don't lay this I on top. I don't, yeah. because if, if it's not pressed right, all I'm doing is smushing it underneath there. So I would rather take it to my ruler. Now, this is only a 24 inch ruler, and I should be 24 and a half inches, which I am. Right. So when I measure, I usually take my things to something instead of laying it on top of it. And squishing it down. To squish it. Now, if you're squaring a quilt or squaring things that are bigger, that's on other story. Yeah, that's different. This is just to get a measurement. I don't measure like laying this on top. Um, okay, so our, you're going to do some sewing. Yeah. So for me, when I attach borders, this is how I do it. I don't know if it's how Lisa does it. Um, well, I'll watch you do it and I'll, I'll... And you can chime in. I can chime in if I need to. Okay, so what I like to do um, is find my middle. So I always fold everything with my um, right. right side out. But you don't assume that's the middle. Yeah, because if you fold it that way, where do I pin? Do I pin outside here on my seam allowance or do I pin? So it's folded, it's the middle, this is a middle seam. So I like just to put a little pin sticking out as my marker, yep. okay? So then this is gonna go on this side and I'm gonna do the same thing on my quilt. For this, part we do have a center seam so it's easy to just do that okay but sometimes when we're folding quilts our seam like on the middle of the quilt our it's not the center is not yeah it's, yeah. Not, it's not a center of a block so or you can't seam. just assume that um i usually put my quilt on top of my border. So if I'm gonna lay my, I usually put my border down. Now when that's different is when, um, if the border's bigger, okay? So, or the quilt's bigger, okay? The baggier, the bigger oh. piece I like to put to the bottom. So, so if something's just a smidge off is what right. she's saying. Yeah. Like say you're a quarter inch difference. We're not going to trim to that quarter inch. We're going to ease that in. Yeah. So that's part of being an accomplished quilter is to know you can ease in a quarter, a half inch, yep. depending how big your quilt is. If your quilt is really big and you need to ease in an inch, you can do it easily. Yes. Yeah. Right. And that's why finding these centers are going to help that. Um, I th That's the art of compensation right. to me. Right. And what we mean by putting it on the top or putting it on the bottom, meaning the part that's baggier is going to go against the feed dogs and the feed dogs are just going to gently ease that in a little bit at a, at a time. Yep. And I know some of the other machines that have like dual feeds or even feeds mm -hmm. all built in, that automatically just helps you do that. Yeah. And so that's my the way I think about it, baggy on the bottom or bigger on the bottom because yeah. that's the piece that's going to get fed, on the bottom. Okay. fed through. All right. So I always, I pin the beginning of my, and I know I pin different than you. So I'm going to, I pin on the outside, you pin on the inside. I'm going to pin it like I do and you're going to have to yank. So I pin. <laughs> I pin the beginning. Just pin how you pin. And I pin the end. But I am going to show you how and I pin. And this is, this is why I, I pin the beginning and I pin the end. Because no matter what, I don't want you to get to the end of this border and go, oh crud, it's a quarter inch off and then just cut it cut off. It off. Right, because, because you don't just sew this on. This has to be pinned because this is your exact end. This is when I always pin. Right, I always sure. pin my borders. Yep. Okay, and then I'm going to match my middles. Okay, so I just kind of think, think of those two as two spoons in a drawer. They're going to lay on top of each other, and I put a little pin in before it so those match up. Um, if they happen to not 
like I did press some open, but the LB way, but most of them I press. And that's fine. They're big. Way. They're yeah. clunky. They don't yeah. have to be open. So I take those marker ones out. And then I just add so, as many so pins. So you see how we, when we look at this, kind of if you can see it, that if anything's a little bigger, it looks it looks pretty good. Yeah. It matches it up better. really good. But <laughs> if know. it's bigger or smaller, then that's, that's where those, that's yeah. why your pins are in there. So we'll pin Lisa's way. Yes. She likes the pin I'm to stitching. the middle. Yeah. So I just pin toward the seam flip. so I can run right up to there and not have to stop to take the pins out. And you do want to put as many pins in here as you need to hold those edges together because there's not going to be anything worse than when you're sewing this border on and you take it off and you know you still want your points to match you still want your the points not of your triangles not to be blunted you want them to you want that seam allowance to hit right there on those triangles or um, you don't want to have a sixteenth of an inch on one side and have those seams pull apart. So be very mindful of keeping all of that, these two edges lined up and even because you can't see what's happening underneath. You just have to, you either have to pin it in place or you have to watch, watch, watch. So I'm going to talk, well this one we really don't have the quilting math so I'll wait about talking about our quilting math. That is, Lisa's looking at this fat, clunky piece. I just want to make sure. When you use the log cabin ruler, remember we didn't cut all those little um, extra pieces off. And I think that's why this quilt feels so heavy. Because um, there are a little bit bigger seam allowance, the seam allowances than, than normal seam allowances. Kind of how I don't cut off my dog ears sometimes. Yep. I'm going to let her sew and then we're going to pin these other borders on and we'll catch up. Do you take your pins out when you're, when you've been sewing? No. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've got the two side borders on. We're going to attach the top and the bottom. Um, Corsage pin. It, that's a long arm pin. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was what I had handy. Um, I just made little, as I was laying out my rounds, I made little tags that just say top, bottom, left, right. You even printed them. I did because I didn't feel like writing it eight times or however many times. Now I'm going to forget which one was what. Oh, uh -oh. Well. <laughs> I took them off. Uh -oh. All right. So when we press these, we press towards the border away from the middle of the quilt. I'm going to just double check. See, I think that's purple, purple. But are we right on this side? See, we do this too. We forget. We take it off too soon. Does I it think, matter? Nope. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. So that's going to be that side. You can pin that side. All I right. can pin this side. Um, so we did press towards the borders. Um, the top and bottom had the four and a half inch um, plain squares added to that. So of course I pressed this wrong so you're not going to nest. So I would force nest that which just means I twist the seam. Um, Forced nest. It's a force of I the nesting. I never heard it called that. I don't know. That's my language. That's good. I like it. <laughs> well, and Tim would say, what for kind of language is that? Because I think that's what my grandma would have said. <laughs> um, again, I'm matching my middles. So you pin, 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 and then she's going to sew this in place. So we didn't really have to do any quilt math this because I already did it for you, and I know that this round fits the next round. Well, this is a pieced round. This so is it a does, pieced round. It fits. Yeah. I probably could have had this sewn. And on, most of if you if you do everything correctly, everything's really going to fit. 
It is. Right. Yeah. So we don't have to force anything. What we're saying is just in case your stitching is off a smidge, we'll we'll talk about how to adjust. Right. It's your if you if you're using like a scant quarter and it really needed to be But you should be checking that all yeah. along. Yep. So for those of you that haven't started yet, these are all going to be good um, assembly tips. Look, I'm still pinning it my way. I started it your way in. Old habits. Way. It is. Yeah. I still so love these pins, right? These I know are we the talked, magic ones, We right? talked about yeah. them in the beginning. Yes, they're nice and skinny. Because it's just so much easier to grab them and they pull have off. a good, okay, you can sew. All right, so she's going to sew those two on, and then we'll have our compensating borders next. All right, you get those ready while I stitch. Okay. All right, so our middle of the quilt is finished, and I just want to show you. I did mine opposite. I have my lights in the middle. So you can decide how yeah. you want your 16 log cabin blocks and to lay out. There were a couple of um, diagrams on uh, um, round five that showed that, so they can play around, but it's kind of fun. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, so this should now measure 34 and, uh, wait, 32 and a half inches. 32 okay. and a half inches, okay, because this was 24 and we added eight inches, so it's 32 and a half. So this is where some of your quilt math is going to come in. So remember the half inch is already added in there for your seam allowances. So when I'm doing quilt math, when I'm trying to figure out what size borders I need, I knock off that half inch for right now. So I'm thinking 32 inches, not 32 and a half, because I don't have to remember 32 inches. The half is always on. It's, yes, yeah. it's assumed, right. which I know we're not supposed to do that, but it's assumed. Okay, so our border strips were cut, and on here it tells you um, border fabric uh, round one, you're gonna cut the strips at two and a half inches. So we're gonna have two pieces, which are gonna go on the sides that are cut at 32 and a half inches. And then if you look at your instructions on here, it says the quilt should now measure 36 and a half, which means the top and bottom borders will measure 36 and a half inches. Okay, so if it's gonna, needs to measure 36 inches and our quilt is 32 inches, so 36 subtract 32, we have four inches, so we need a two inch border on this side and a two inch border on this side, and that's how we're gonna get our 36. 36. Now, I'm saying two inches, but remember that's the finished size, so that means when I cut these, I have to cut them at two and a half inches to include our seam allowance, and then it's all, it's all added. So for this round in particular, you're going to have two, um, your side borders are cut at two and a half by 34, or excuse me, 32 and a half, and two and a half by 36 and a half, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're, I also like to add the sides on my quilt first. Do you do that? Yes, I always do sides, and kind of like how you build a house. You put the sides up yep. and put the roof in the... And the basement. Yeah, so the you the have to put the sides of the house up before you can put on the roof or finish the basement. There you go. Roof, roof, which yeah. depends where <laughs> we're from. Roof or roof? <laughs> roof, roof, roof. <laughs> okay, so for these, again, if our measurement was different. Now, if it was only a quarter of an inch different, I'm not going to cut them a different size, but let's say at this stage of the game, for some reason, you were an inch off, okay? I'm just going to say your quilt was 33 and a half inches instead of 32 and a half inches. I think you should make it bigger. The Our, quilt is bigger. No, like like they did a uh, chubby seam I th I find that oh, people so do be smaller. Do smaller. Okay. Like. Yeah, like okay. this needs to be bigger. All right, so because that would be this, harder. The right? same, the same way. It's it's just uh, yeah. we're adding or subtracting. Right. So, so let's, let's say, say this is 31. thirty-one and a half inches instead of thirty-two, and our finished sides needs to be thirty-six inches. So that means we have thirty-one inches and thirty-six inches. 
we now are five inches different. Right. And we have the two sides, which means we take our five inches divided by two. So that means our border strips would now need to finish at two and a half inches, which means we need to cut them at three. So, okay. so don't cut these ahead of time until you, right? Yeah. And if you do cut them if, ahead if of time. If you're unsure about yeah. your piecing. Yeah, if you're not sure about your math. So that's why it's good that we're watching these videos before this step. But you do have some extra fabric if you need to adjust, okay? Right, right. Um, and hopefully you won't But I don't think you're going to be there because with the rulers, this because is... Because you've been trying. But we're just trying to just touch on that just in case, Yeah. you know. It's not something and that we teach. if the math really screws you up, put it on bigger. Uh -huh. Put it on bigger and trim, and trim it, it to down. 36 and a half. Yeah. And if the <laughs> math is really screwing you up, please put it on Stitch and ask a question. And yeah, if we can I have help you. to DM you and have you call me and figure out the math because maybe can. you're maybe you're 31 and three quarters or right. something like that. So yeah. then you're like talking quarter inches yeah. and eighth of inches. Yes. And sometimes that quarter inch is worth easing or stretching. Right, in. but I, I bet 98% of you, this is going to be spot on. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now we're going to pin on the sides. sides. So Do you this remember is, which one yep. was your side? Yep, because that was my top First and bottom one. There you go. All right. So again, ends. Yeah. Hopefully so are matched. Do, Woo! Yes, we are. Look at okay. that. And I sew this, actually, I'm, I'm pinning it opposite of how I would sew it. I sew it with my border, so I would pin it with my border down. So you can see your seams? So I can see my seams, because otherwise, you know, my border strip at this point doesn't have any seams in it. And even if it does have a seam in it, it probably only has one seam in it. So I like to see my seams of my quilt. So let's talk about these strips, like, because we're not going to go on bigger, right? I mean, we're just going to do this, show them how to do this. We're going to do one more. We'll, okay. we'll pin this next one. But on. I just want to say that if you have to sew these together to get longer borders once you get mm -hmm. over here, how do you do that, Val? I sew straight seams. Right. A lot of people do the diagonal thing. I don't do that either. I, I do... only do the diagonal when I'm doing binding. Right. And I have to tell you, I had a phone call from my mom with <laughs> some of my aunts that had watched uh, live we did at my house mm -hmm. and we were talking about that because I had a quilt on my long arm back then that somebody had mitered their or done the 45 degree angle on their borders and it really makes can make your border full if you don't sew that correctly and so my aunt was saying Val doesn't sew her binding on a miter and I said, go back and listen to the video. I probably said it more bossy than that. <laughs> I had the, the older sister go back and listen to that video because Lisa and I were talking about borders. borders. Whether they're binding. inner borders or big borders because I don't want to see this big, long diagonal yeah. in my border. If, But to tell you the truth, I always put on lengthwise borders. Yes. But I do when I can. Sometimes yeah. patterns don't give you that, mm -hmm. right? And you have no choice. So right. you have to put them, you have to sew them together. So I'd rather see, I, I, I think a straight seam is less noticeable than that big, long miter. Yeah. And I joint. know that I think there was a, a reason for it at a, some time? A theory. Okay. Okay. Um, a lot of times people do mitered corners on their borders when there's a design or stripes or things they that they that want to matchy matchy. And I think that was the same reason our uh, quilt mothers ahead uh, of us four used, mothers. To that, used to do that um, because you can you have a little bit more um, give in lining up a design on a diagonal than a straight sometimes. Right, and we're just telling you how we do things. It's not set in stone oh, no. concrete the right way, okay? We, the, we're just sharing with you yeah. the way we like to do things. Yeah. So you do whatever you want. I'm not the quilt police. You're yeah. not the quilt you're police. No, 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 I mean, no. and if, I just want you guys to feel pretty good about yourselves because mm -hmm. look at my crappy. 
ironing job. But so when she presses it, she'll press, she can always you know, press that out. I will press these open. I always say the quilt police are not going to come and look at the inside of my quilt. Right. Nobody's yeah. coming. Right. You know. And so. I, I believe progress is better than perfection. Yes. And if you like to press your seams open, by all means, press your seams open. All right. We good Stitch. on that? Okay. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna pin the top and the bottom now, but I did wanna talk about something, Lisa, and I, I forgot to say, I think it's on that one. Um, when I cut my border strips, cause I did kind of everything ahead of time, I just wrote on the back side with a little friction pen that this was my 36 and a half inch border so that I wasn't sitting there trying to figure out. So I didn't wanna write on the um, back of my pieced borders, but on these borders, it was easy enough to write the um, cut size of the border on there. And you could have written top or bottom or the fr it. And the friction pen comes Yeah, the comes friction, off. when I iron it, it's gonna come off. I did it light though, I didn't like do it heavy. See, look how everything's matching up yeah. nice and No even. bag whatsoever, nice. Boy, this quilt would go together really fast if you and I were sitting here doing it. <laughs> when you had a press secretary and yes. a stitching secretary. And a yes, very nice. Pinning secretary, mm -hmm. right? Yes, make quilts together and then they go much faster. Yep. I should have told I her we were going to make the whole thing so then I would be done when I leave here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Amy and I sometimes take team oh, yes. quilts that we have to get done for quilt, for uh, market. Half square triangles. We could just knock it out when there's two people making it. Well, and it's good when you're all on the same page of knowing that what you're working on. Yeah, when the machines are all dialed in on the same quarter inch. I'm just using this as like a little leader and ender, so I'm not, just well, in case my machine would well, and thread. Well, I think it's a good idea yeah. um, because I think, I've, I notice that a lot with when I'm teaching beginning quilting, that a lot of my students spend more time than they should be necessarily re-threading their machine because the thread sucks out of it when yeah. they when they stop, um, especially when you tend to sew fast, like Lisa does, mm -hmm. and me too, I sew pretty fast. Because I just kind of like whip stuff yeah. out of there. And, and just I think the process of me pulling it out a lot of times, thread. yeah, just messes with my thread once in a while. Yep. So one thing I do want to talk about too is when you're at this stage of the game, you know, I try to give my quilts haircuts as I'm going or cut my threads, but sometimes I miss them. So remember to do that and cut, don't pull. pull. Yeah. Because if you happen to pull, maybe your tension might have been off a little bit and you pull something that's actually a seam and all of a sudden you've ripped out your sewing stitches. Right, know? and I tend to stitch a little smaller than everybody else yeah. does, my stitch length. So I stitch a smidge under two on yeah. my machine. Yeah, and I'm two or, yeah. yeah. So it somewhere. all depends on your machine, yeah. but just make sure your stitches aren't big stitches that so you can easily. So they're not pulling out, especially yeah. when you're handling all these edges. Those seams are getting handled yeah. a lot, and, and sometimes it pulls apart. Sometimes, like a lot of times, on the ends of those, I'll do just a little back mm -hmm. tack. You know, the thing you're not supposed to do because it's hard to rip out, but sometimes when you have those lot yeah. of edges. And um, another little trick that I've done, if I know I'm gonna be showing a quilt that I don't have borders on, I will sometimes stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around an edge. Um, so that I don't pull any stitches out. That kind of helps secure it. Yeah, as a long armor, you love it when your customers stay stitched that, that edge. edge. If they're if they're this is the end of if their quilt pieced. and it has all that piecing. If it's Please just one big long border, it's okay. Yeah, and the one place I do um, back tack or set my seam or lock my stitches or whatever is my final border. Um, because that is never going to get sewn back over top right. of that seam. 
So it's a way of me securing, securing it without it being secured with stitches. All right, I'm going to press, and then we're going to talk about these last couple, yeah. this next set of borders. Okay, so um, I do want to talk real quick about the row quilt version of this, which has been addressed. We didn't tell you, give you exact directions because the assembly of the pieces, we just told you how many of each, so we didn't tell you like how many two and a half inch squares, any of that. But on my row quilt version, I cut two and a half inch strips as my um, dividing borders on the row quilt. Okay, so they were two and a half inch strips and every row should be 48 and a half inches. It'll finish at 48 long. So I had to sew more than one two and a half inch strip. You need an extra four and a half inches or more depending on if you washed or starched. So just make sure um, that you have all of those pieces at 48 and a half inches. And this is one time that I actually would have added my top and bottom before I added my size. Size, the same size. Because those are all. So I think I needed 10. Was it 10 or 8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 strips at 48 and a half inches to separate your rows. And that's depending upon how many rows you made. If you had added more rows, then um, to make your quilt longer, then you would need more And Val's in picked purple and green for hers, and you were in charge of picking yours. So yes. your colors made different than ours. So I have to say that one of the finished quilts that I saw um, on Facebook, on your stitch group, somebody had picked um, five different colors. I so like she might have had purple, green, pink, red, and then the next one was blue. So it was cool because I was like, oh, that would, that's a great. So my mom is making this quilt. So I bought her, I just got half yards of five different colors so that she could do it that way because I thought, well, that's a, that was a neat, So do you know way. which one of these is your top? Yep, so okay. this is my top. So um, this is your left. Actually, I did that wrong. Yeah, that's my top. This is my left over left. here, left, right. All right, so I'm gonna just lay this down. Um, and the only reason this would matter is if you don't wanna end up with, like on my quilt where I have pink, 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 you know, all in a row or whatever. But honestly, it's gonna happen in this quilt. Yeah. So if we're looking at this and I have this laid out, there's, we, our compensating border or our um, stop border is the right size because mm -hmm. everything is still matching. So again, I'm going to pin this. No. Yep. I want to, well, this one we're going to do back opposite. So the quilt is going to go down and the border is going to go on top because the compensating border doesn't have seams in it but the pieced border does. Now let's say yours is like a half inch or a quarter inch off. You're gonna still pin the middle, pin the ends, and stitch it. And yes. it's going to move to be the right size. Yeah, so if this wasn't matching the way I just saw it, um, I would find my middles. And actually, as this quilt gets bigger, I would be folding things and finding my middles and matching them because that's one way to keep me in check that when there is a center seam and a border to the next center seam in the next row, it's going to keep everything lined up. Okay. You have right on your lap? I got it in my lap. Okay. All right. And I like sewing this way too because you can see your intersections. Well, and remember this border doesn't, you're not going to hit those intersections because right. those float. You don't chop off any star points. So don't on try this one. to hit that point there because that's a you're half inch. You're going to have a half inch <laughs> seam. But when they are quarter inch, not floating seams. Right, like the um, last round. Yeah, it's nice to see where they go. On those half square triangles, I could see exactly where to hit. So I'm just gonna have Lisa sew on this last one. We'll show you how to line that one up and that it lines up and then we'll talk about just a few 
final things on the stitch along. Yes, we have a pretty good announcement. Yes. So stay till the end for the announcement. Okay, so now these are on. We would press them. Um, I might now at this point press towards the compensating border just because it's gonna, it's the path of least resistance. But on that first one, we pressed away from the quilt. So it's kind of every other one you're going, you're to going the towards, sashing. yeah, to the, to the sashing or the border. So this would go on next. Let's just make sure. My other checkpoint of where I can line that up is where my seams of my block will line up to my sashing piece. And then this one, I probably, I would have folded to get my center. Just show. I'm gonna fold the quilt and get the center on that edge yep. for me. And then I'm not gonna pin because we didn't press, but I'm gonna, we're gonna get it lined up just so you can see. You line it up and give it a nice press and then throw a pin in it. Okay, so this would get, I'd have a match point here at this first block because those will need to nest. Our centers would nest. I'm not even going to pin because I didn't press yet. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. But it lines up. We don't have any. Issues, bulk, issues, bag. Right. right. And if we don't have issues at this stage, you probably we not shouldn't going. have issues at the next couple stages. Um, one other trick I like to do if something that I've pieced sometimes is just a smidge big, I will saturate it with starch again and let, let it, it kind of shrink up and dry. So that's a way to kind of keep it from... And usually that's on this type of a border, yes. right? Not yeah. Your, yeah. yeah, not your not your pieced one. So Cuz that's a long arm trick like if you get a quilt that somebody didn't like put the border on right and the border is just doing this, starching that helps. Yeah, I'm a little leery of doing that if it's my own quilt to do it because what if their fabric bleeds or mm -hmm. ah, so I get a little scary with that but yeah, I'm just um, saying it, it can work all right so that will be the second set of piece the pieced round and you just continue on when you're done your quilt will be 104 inches square um, I want to talk about binding strips so typically I cut my binding strips at two and a half inches but that's when I have a plain border on the edge so if I was if this was my border and I had, Two and a half. yeah, because I like, I do a three eighth inch seam allowance. Oh. I like mine to be a little bit bigger. But on this quilt, our last round has quarter inch seam allowances. So if you decide you want your quilt to be just a little bit bigger, okay, you could add a, like a three and a half inch cut border and that would make your quilt 110 inches square. So for those if of you, you that have a big king size. King size. Right? So like, then on that, I would, cut a two and a half inch border. That's how I would cut them, okay? But for this quilt, because we have our um, quarter inch piecing out here on the edge, we need our quarter inch um, binding. I cut, when I do quarter inch bindings, I cut mine at one and seven eighths. I know Ooh. some people do two inch. What do you do? Two. Two. I do one and seven eighths because I know my sewing machine, my Bernina sews just a scant, scant yeah. quarter um, and I just like it to to have especially to be that. like we don't you think we use our bi our batting is much thinner than it used to be yes so if your batting's a little thicker yeah. that's when you might need a little two bit smaller or two and an yeah. yeah when I do flannel quilts that's two and an eighth otherwise it's two for me that's yeah that's I've what I've always you done that for yeah. years but yes. you like you finish a quarter inch and I like to finish mine at three eighths right I know some people like half inch and one inch, so your math on that's going to be totally your different. Your problem, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I do like my binding um, to be filled all the way to the edge. So do you trim your quilt after you're done to put your binding on, or do you I have do. batting and no, backing out there? No, I trim mine. I trim, swear, trim. I swear it, it off. Make I it easy it. on yourself and trim your and quilt. And if it's something like this, I make sure I have that quarter inch from my points 
With your ruler, yep. With my ruler mm -hmm. as I'm trimming. So I'm trimming my backing, my batting, and hopefully not my quilt top. Right. Um, after it's but been sometimes. quilted. sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, especially if it's a plain border. Right. Because sometimes quilting sucks things Because when in. you trim, you're squaring your quilt, too. Yeah, because you're if you're just putting edge. a binding on with all that on and then trimming, that yeah. doesn't make and sense. Yeah, and that's, you know, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. When we say we're squaring a quilt, really the only thing I square are my corners, okay? Mm -hmm. So like if this was a quilt that was quilted, I would take that ruler and I would lay that on there. And when I cut that corner, I'm making sure that that has right angles to right. themselves. Because okay? sometimes the corners, the, I don't, sometimes the long arms They're like pull this. that out just a little yeah. bit. Yeah, sometimes it flays it out or... And it's not a big deal. No. You just square it. But, Make it straight again. And sometimes maybe we got a little sloppy in how we pinned or pieced or whatever, and it does get a little. So you don't want your corners to be like that. You want your corners to be right straight. angles. Straight. 90 degrees. And then um, the edge of my quilt, I find a measurement on my quilt I can measure away from. So if, if I have a 10-inch border on mm -hmm. my quilt, I take the edge of my quilt and measure out my 10 and a quarter or 10 and whatever it's yes. supposed to be. And then I'm trimming straight along that edge of the quilt. Um, so when it's going on a bed, you really don't notice if you've shaved a little extra off of a border or something like that right, to, to kind make of it square, square it up. Yeah. yeah. So and once it's washed and I just think it yeah. harmoniously. Yeah. But I like my corners to be square yeah. on I think of it if, if it was hanging on a wall, is it going to look like I have a cockeyed picture frame? <laughs> yeah, you know, right? I want yeah. my corners because to Because a lot of these quilts are art, and they are for decorating, and they are for hanging on the wall. Don't think that this quilt has to be put nope. on a bed. This would be great in an office, soften the interior of your office. Like, all these textiles yeah, are we were great saying for decorating. Is, is nice in here... Instead yeah. of just black and gray and white, you know, it adds a little pop of color in right. there. So sometimes you need that sunny, sunny stuff. So, again, measure each round. Um, make any adjustments in your compensating borders that you need to. And, you know, I don't, if you're going over a half of an inch bigger per strip side than what I'm telling you to cut, check your quarter inch seam allowances because yes. that that would be a huge red flag to me right. that i'm not something my math something's not right, right. so um if you've been trimming everything and your your seam allowances are still ending up big or small right it's some of it's all the your, comments have been that people are having a blast making this how fun they are how, how easy accurate. it is how accurate yeah. it is yeah. so that's that's good to know. So here we have one little announcement. Do we have anything else before um, we... Nope, uh, I talked about binding. We talked about quilt math. Okay. This is so good. what we thought we would do to make it fun is we want to reward you for finishing your quilt top and, and doing this, this whole uh, six months or whatever it has been with us. So we are going to give away three prizes that are over $250. What? Yeah, well, Val, <laughs> they have a lot invested yes, in this quilt, they right? Do. They had to yes. do, they had to buy fabric, rulers, uh, pad, all that stuff. She's so, not just giving you a charm pack. No, <laughs> no, I want, I want you to finish these. So, this, or January. 13th, 13th, Friday, Friday the 13th. 13th. Yes, yes. We're going to be together. Yes, and yeah. we're going to pick the winners. And we're going to announce the winners that day. So you're going to finish your quilt top. And you're going to send us a photo with you and your quilt top together to Heidi N at primitivegatherings.us. I'm sure it's up there on the screen for you as well. Send that to us whenever you can, as soon as you are finished. And we will put you in the drawing for the, one of those three big prizes. So that's a little incentive for you to keep Finish going. Finish it. It doesn't have to be quilted. It's right, just no, your quilt top. Just your, just quilt, your top. quilt top. Yep. And we will reward three people for getting awesome. it done. All right. Awesome. Okay, I think that's all. Yep. Yeah, thank this you. This is such a fun project. Thank I'm you, so, everyone. I'm so uh, honored that you used my fabric for this. It turned out so beautiful as well. I mean, you can see your quilts are turning out beautiful, I'm sure. But yeah, and keep watching for your companion 
um, projects projects to yep. go with the rulers yep. that so we tell them what you're doing you have snailing around the lake so it's a snails trail and Lisa has a new lakeside flannel line coming out and since everything is oversized and trimmed down I'm not afraid to use flannel for these smaller pieces so it's right. going to be called snailing around the lake instead of sailing around the lake um, <laughs> uh, so that'll be coming out Right, so we line. promised you we'd, we'd do some yep. more quilts, but we want you to focus on these. We yes. don't want to give you any yep. more projects right First now. First of the year. First of yeah. the year. Yeah, so we will continue to use these rulers, but you just get this thing finished, get it off to us, and we're going to pick your name. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. All right, take care, and we'll see you in the Stitch with Lisa Von Jean group. Please don't be shy. Post, ask questions, and we will be there for you. Bye now.